atrio para que comencemos con la conferencia que nos va a dictar el ingeniero Vincent Bruckhaus. Él va a tratar el tema Estado del Arte y Tecnologías de Inspección. Ingeniero Vincent es ingeniero mecánico del Politécnico de Almelo, Países Bajos, especialista en tecnología de perforación y producción del Instituto de Tecnología del Petróleo y Gas, Países Bajos. Ha sido director de proyectos de perforación en ESCO Limitada, Países Bajos, director del Departamento de Operaciones de Rosen, Alemania, director de proyectos senior en Rosen, Dubai, director de operaciones en Rosen, Australia. Desde el 2013 a la fecha se desempeña como director de soluciones en negocios de campo para Rosen, Brasil. Ingeniero, bienvenido. Las personas que necesiten traducción simultánea, aquí a la salida les estamos entregando el aparato. Adelante. Uh, thanks, Mauricio. Um, I'd also like to uh, thank the organization for giving me the opportunity uh, to be here today with you uh, and to share with you um, the latest on the state of the art in pipeline inspection uh, technologies. Um, it has been a, I know it has been a long day uh, for all of you, so it's really good to see that there are still so many participants here. Um, I hope I will not disappoint you today in this, uh, this presentation. Um, I have to apologize because I don't speak Spanish, um, maybe five words, so I can order a coffee and a beer, but that's as far as it goes. So that's not enough to present today uh, where we stand for with uh, state-of-the-art uh, inspection technologies. So why do we inspect pipelines? Um, ultimately, I think it's our common goal uh, to reach zero incidents. Yeah? So that's why it's good to be here together with you, pipeline owners, pipeline operators, um, to have this open open discussion, to, to share with you where we stand in the inspection technology and where we can contribute to ultimately reach the goal of zero incidents. So we're talking about pipelines. Um, we all know that pipelines are one of the safest uh, methods of transporting hydrocarbons. And we also know that the pipeline industry has a long uh, history of being engaged in operating pipelines in, in a safe manner. However, we all have to be honest to ourselves and we know that pipeline incidents still do occur. Although it's a rear, um, a re rear uh, incident, a rear event, uh, they, do, they do occur. So where, where can we, as a technology provider, uh, support you? Um, so if you look into a management process, it's driven, of course, by people. Um, but also facilitated by the technology. And that's where service providers like Rosen uh, can, can support you. So we will go one step back in history. This is a long time ago, even before I was born. Um, the first MFL tool um, developed by uh, one of the competitors, Chubasco, um, back in 1965. So it's more than 50 years that we actually are running MFL inspection tools. Um, of course, it has developed. This, this was a very low resolution uh, tool. Um, so in the 70s, I think we came with the first, what we call high resolution tools. Um, and in the 80s, it was, was further developed. Um, and also different technologies uh, came, came into the market. So I would like to talk you today uh, to several aspects. So first I would like to go into the, the, into the market, how this, this uh, evolved uh, over the years, um, identify possible threats and challenges, and ultimately I would like to show you uh, the latest uh, state-of-the-art developments Rosie can offer, offer to the industry. Um, so let's talk about the pipeline market, pipelines. Pipelines are all over the world. Anyone, any idea how many kilometers of pipeline there is worldwide? Guess? No guess, okay. It's quite a number. Three and a half million kilometers of pipeline worldwide. Um, quite impressive. Um, I think we all know 
that the majority of those pipelines are in the US. Yeah? So 65% of total pipeline network is actually in the US. So that's over 2 million, uh, two million uh, kilometers. So any idea how many kilometers of pipeline in South America? Maybe easier. No? 105, 105,000. It's still quite, quite a substantial number, yeah? So that's 3% of the total pipeline network is actually in South America. So I think that, that's quite, quite, quite an impressive number. So if you then look to the trends um, in, in, the, in the pipeline industry, and of course we use, I use US again as an example because that, that is where the majority of the pipelines are, but I think we can say that it's more or less the same trend um, all, all over the world. Mainly in the US you saw that there was a lot of uh, pipeline construction ongoing in, in, the, in the 50s, um, but we also see it here. The pipeline systems worldwide are aging, and, and that's of course a concern for all of us. Uh, majority of the pipelines have been built yeah, de decades, decades ago. So what affects the pipeline integrity? That's of, first of all the construction methods. All the pipelines had not the advanced construction methods we see uh, these days. But it also um, affects the operational parameters. So how is the operator actually operating his, his assets? Um, that also contributes to the integrity of, of, of the pipeline systems. And of course environmental, environmental uh, impacts. So now we talk about the evolution of inline inspection. Yeah. Um, so we spoke already about the first uh, MFL tool yeah. back in '65, if you still remember. Um, so of course it has, has evolved. In the '70s we had the first high-resolution tools. Uh, in the '80s we came up with uh, new technologies like the UT uh, measurement uh, principles. Um, so that's the development of the technologies. But we, but, but we also see a development of, of the tools. So if we look back in uh, 1965, the first tool could run maybe 50 kilometers. If you look towards the end, uh, end of the year, uh, end, end of the, the graph, there are now pipelines inspected more than 1,200 and if, even 1,400 kilometers in one single run. And that's even with combined technologies. So you see how that, that has evolved. Um, Multi-diameter tools are available. Tools are all 1.5D capable. So that has been quite an involvement uh, throughout the years. So going back to the pipelines. Um, pipelines are exposed to a wide range of potential damages and mechanism, uh, which may result in leakage, or even worse, if not identified uh, in, in time. So what are the possible uh, challenges in, in, uh, in the pipeline industry? Let's have more, a more detailed look in, into that. So, this is actually a list of all the possible uh, challenges you as pipeline operator might, might face in a day-to-day -day, uh, business. Um, you have issues with, with the geometry of the pipeline, which can caused by third-party intervention or, or the way the pipeline was, uh, for example, uh, laid. Of course, corrosion. Uh, besides third-party intervention, corrosion is the major um, risk uh, of the integrity of, of, of your pipeline system. Uh, the trajectory of, of your pipeline, uh, landslides, for example, can, can lead to uh, bending, bending strains, pipeline movements, uh, cracks. Cracks, of course, is a major threat of, of, uh, of the uh, pipe, pipeline system. And then a lot of pipelines are actually not inspectable at all. Uh, the industry called them uh, non-pickable. Non, non so it's quite a list. I would love to discuss it all with you, but then we sit here maybe tonight at 9 or 10, uh, and that would not be appreciated. So I had to make a sm uh, small selection. Um, so, like I said before, corrosion is still a major threat uh, in the pipeline industry. So I would like to attach, uh, attach to that uh, point to show you where we stand uh, nowadays, what we can offer you in, in that respect. Uh, I would like to go with you over, over cracks. So what can, can we offer uh, as a service provider um, in identifying cracks and how to handle that? And then last but not least, the non-pickable non non -pickable pipelines. So talking about um, the uh, pipeline operator challenges. So what, what are the challenges for you if you run, for example, an MFL inspection tool? Um, although we call it high resolution, uh, it's not high enough quite oft for quite complex, complex corrosion. So small, small defects 
are just not detectable uh, with the MFL technology. That's just a limitation of the technology. Um, also, the data evaluation. It's still a lot of manual work to be done, which is on the one hand good because it's really precisely measured. On the other hand, it can impact the repeatability of the results because it's very difficult well, to keep consistent in analyzing, analyzing the data. Um, and if you take these two in consideration, um, you will end up with a very um, conservative integrity assessment, yeah? Because the defects might not be sized to the full extent, to the full accuracy. Uh, the data evaluation still has its limitations. So if you add those two together, you will end up with a quite conservative uh, integrity assessment approach. So this is not related to pipelines, but just a comparison with other industry, yeah? Uh, we talk here about uh, the medical world. Actually, here you see, here you see a comparison between UT uh, and the 3D computed uh, tomography. So you see what kind of difference that is in, in resolution. So I don't show this just out of nothing. So how would that affect if we could apply the same to the pipeline industry? So this is what we provide nowadays. This is high resolution, so this is really good, good data. Um, we call it actually um, uh, data points and, and line plots. But how would that look if we go for high resolution, ultra high resolution? It would look like this. So you will have a 3D image of your pipeline. So by having this, of course, it's a nice picture, but it's not about the picture. We will be able to really size those features which we cannot detect these days. Uh, that means um, complex corrosion, which is really difficult to size because of the limitation of the MFL technology. But with high resolution, we will be able to uh, detect that accordingly. Um, MIC, which is uh, microbiotically influenced corrosion, which is normally very small, can be as small as one millimeter, but very aggressive. So if this is not being detected at the early stage, it can uh, form a real threat for your pipeline system. Seeping pinholes. Uh, pinhole is normally not detected with the standard MFL technology. Uh, it's not leaking, but it's so small that it's actually seeping. But of course it affects uh, your, your pipeline and it can lead to environmental uh, damage. So this is an example between um, the current available. Um, it's a C-scan, so there's normally data which we provide uh, to the end user. Uh, so this shows complex corrosion. This is an example. Of